Miles Woods is not out there. Yeah, under the weather this morning. Came in for a bit, but wasn't feeling well, so he went, took the day off. Uh, Sam Malinsky doesn't get in that, that first preseason game, but I know we talked about him maybe being a part of that group that's battling for the uh, bottom yeah. part of the defense roster. What are you looking for out of him after you know kind of being able to jump in at the NHL level last year? Yeah, same as everyone else. I mean, you got to be able to play on both sides of the puck to play D on our team, right? So. That's why the exhibition games are important. You know, he did a really nice job coming up with us. He's a great skater. Looks like he's put on a little bit of size and strength over the course of the summer, which is standing out now in training camp. I think he's had a fantastic camp so far. Yeah, we'll see what he does in the exhibition games. What's the takeaway from the first exhibition game? What do you talk to the guys about after that game? It just depends on the players, you know. Like I sat down with Richie and Olsen and Foodie today, make sure that they understand what were some of the things they did well, what they can expand on, and then some of the defensive details that need to go into the game, puck management. Um, talk, talked with Kovalenko this morning, went through some of his stuff. Just, It's all about getting to feel more and more comfortable with the system play so they can excel with their skill set. You know, and then for some other guys, uh, Prater met with some D, talking to them about um, what options to use, how we could play north quicker, some of the defending details for some of the newer guys coming into our system of defense and where some of the breakdowns were and how we prevent them. Completely different, yeah. Because you know, otherwise he's in like early last year. He's in the same boat. Everyone knows, you know, he's a big player that's been around the league. What his weaknesses were, where we feel like he's got to get better, and then we go to work with him on that. <clears throat> and then second half of the year, he dials in the defending details, the way we want to play, and he just becomes a great player for us. So now we expect him to pick up where he left off. It's not new to him anymore. He's feeling comfortable with not only his line mates but the system play and you know he's a guy then then you know as he gets used to it his skill set excels and he becomes a really good player in the second half production comes with that it's where we're trying to get all of our guys to as, as early as possible throughout the course of the year how do you feel now that you're there today today yeah he was fine today yeah i liked their practice today actually yep yeah, he'll use the word we're talking about uh, logan's extension he said that it was a necessity Yeah, 100 percent. Like he brings all those intangibles to the table, you know, great, you know, in the fitness category, the skating, the speed, the competitiveness in every aspect of your game needs leaders. Right. Like Nate's leading the power play with Miko and Kale. And then you got like you you get the penalty killers, bottom six guys. You want them to have an identity and a way to play. And Cogs is a big part of that. OC is a big part of that. He'll take on a bigger leadership role with some of those guys, with his line, how they want to play. He's a guy that's been around, understand, has done everything he has to do in order to be able to not only like develop and then play for us, but to move up our lineup. So, I mean, I think you, as many guys like that you can get leaders in, in different aspects of your game, the better off you are. Yeah, it's been pretty good, I think. Like, you got guys like Belmar leading the way. You've got, um, well, Mac was already skating and working with Richie prior to camp and then took him to Vail, you know, for that camp. Um, yeah, I think that there's, you know, a lot of guys talking. Taser, he's paired with Shillington today and Brandstrom with Makar for tomorrow. Um, you know, not only are they trying to reach out to him, but they also want to play with him, you know, like Taser came and asked to play with some of the new guys so he could talk to him, and, you know, so I like the, the way they're thinking when it comes to that. You know, in past years, those top forwards, they don't usually get a lot of preseason playing time, but for someone like Casey Middlestack, given the fact that his winters seem to be kind of a question mark right now, do you think that him getting a lot more games for that audition? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think those guys can, you know, they're going to get 
a handful of games, two or three. Um, and I like to sort of be clear on who may or may not play with him before we do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a big difference. Like, there's – you want to have kids that are knocking at the door, prospects that you have that you've drafted that are developing down there, and you want them developing at a high rate. Well, my opinion is they're not going to develop at a high rate playing with each other. You know what I mean? So playing with guys like TJ Tynan, having high-end American League skill, pro skill that knows what it takes not only to get here, but – how he can help those young guys continue to play their game, I think, is a big add. Um, you want some of those young guys knocking on the door, so you have options to call them up and take a look at them and check on their development. But you also want other guys that are, you know, we know that they're ready and can come up for a game or two and, and, and jump into our lineup and possibly help us win. So it's a good mix of guys down there. That's a two-way street. Like, those guys all wanted to come back to the Eagles and to be able to play for the Eagles. They understand what their opportunity is with our team and, and w the way we think about development, but they're also okay if they have to go down to be able to play with the Eagles and in that organization, which to me is a top AHL organization. It's it's definitely up there with, with the best in the league and as far as spots go to play, and, and they liked it there, and they liked the organization, so they wanted to come back, and we wanted those guys back for the reasons that you just brought up. Yeah, I didn't know him very well prior to that. So just like the, I just evaluated his play a little bit through last season and then through rookie camp. I'll say Sean looked better in the game last night than he did in rookie camp. So he seems to be growing. He looks better every day in practice as he gets more comfortable with the speed of the game. So just in the short time from DU to now rookie camp and getting more clear on the structure of the game, getting used to the pace of the play and the way our players want to play and the system that we want to play seems to be improving, which I like that growth over from him in a short period of time. Do you have a lot of conversations with Andrew Schneekloff in a week like this, you know, when, when you guys are on the ice together before it's, you know, phone calls and things like that? Yeah. Yeah, the, he, they're in our office, obviously, on the ice with us. And not just me and, and Schneeks, but also – you know, Prater and Ray with Danny and Tim, you know, like there's lots of conversations going on about what we're doing on the penalty kill, what we like, what we don't, same thing on the power play. And then just like all of us kind of sitting around having a talk, evaluating the players on the ice, what we liked, what we didn't, what this guy needs to work on. That way, like that communication for me is imperative because then like guys that get sent down, they know the message that we're sending and what they need to work on and they can help those guys continue to develop. Yeah. Well, uh, Tim said that he thinks he has another level. To get to. What does that look like to you? I think that the next le the, the level for Kale will be to continue to develop his defensive game so he's defending with aggression using his skating and physicality and close out plays to get us in and out of our zone quicker like if he doesn't get the first touch how do we check it back quickly and put high importance on that and his net front play um, less time we spend in our zone the more time we can go on the attack which he can play to his strengths with Don Pedron last year coming in and um, the first part of his well, this year I think it's easier. Like I already touched on that a little bit. Like the, a lot of the coaching and teaching was done last year, making sure he's clear because he's got a skill set that we can use. And having him understand his role and what the non-negotiables are and the way we defend and the way we want to check the puck back. And he was outstanding at it in the second half of the year. You know, like he knows now and, that, and just in brief conversations with him that he's coming back to pick up where he left off and continue to play a 200-foot game for us. So it's not 
is not a bunch of coaching. The coaching will be done like when we start making mistakes in games, how we want to cure them, and and um, you know where we can create our offense and how they can help us do that. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Coach.